When we ask for forgiveness, the only thing we're getting is forgiveness. Allah is telling us, when you ask for forgiveness, there is nothing I don't give you. It's, like, it's almost like you can ask for other things, or you could just ask for forgiveness and everything's covered. Everything's included. What's left? Money, children, the skies opened up for all of your problems, gardens, rivers, all of it's ready to go. And by the way, seeking forgiveness, we're learning now, you, you would think, normally a person would think, when they're asking Allah's forgiveness, then you know, it's going to help them in their akhirah. It's going to help them in their afterlife. These ayat are telling us, no, Allah is not only going to help you in your akhirah, He's going to help you where? In this dunya. In other words, the essence of our direct connection with Allah, which is what iman is, which is what tawheed is, which is what la ilaha illallah is. The essence of it is, you get to ask Allah directly for what you need. And I'm telling you, I'm reminding myself, the thing we need the most, because it will take care of all of our needs, is seeking forgiveness. Now, there's a seeking of forgiveness by the tongue, and there's a seeking of forgiveness by the heart. Human beings tend to be defensive. If I criticize you for something, hey, I saw you said that, why did you say that? I didn't mean it like that. You don't understand what I was going through. Excuse me. You don't even understand the whole, story, the whole story. Hey, I noticed that you did this, this, this. You get defensive immediately. Human beings have good view of themselves, but they make lots of excuses. They keep throwing excuses. If you're going to make, if you're going to seek Allah's forgiveness, you have to find a time, and I don't, it doesn't matter if you don't know Arabic, and you only know Punjabi, and you only know Bangla or Bahasa or English or Urdu, it doesn't matter. You speak to Allah and you genuinely admit to Him what you've done wrong and don't make excuses. It's really hard to do that. Because even when you stand in the mirror, you lie to yourself. You tell yourself, I'm not that bad. I have reasons for what I did. I have justification, I've been through a lot. But when you're gonna come in front of Allah, you have to forget about justifying. Because all of your justifications, He knows them already. He knows what you were going through, he knew it was a tough time, he knew that this was overwhelming you, that was overwhelming you, I was under a lot of stress, Ya Rab, that's why I drank. Don't give him the reasons, he knows your reasons better than you do. You need to come to him openly, without any filters, without any hesitation, with no guard, with no shame. Like you're embarrassed to even admit this to anyone, but you until you completely, openly admit to Allah how messed up you've been, and how you've messed up, completely openly. And as you do it, let me tell you, as you start verbalizing those things, I would be hard pressed to think your tears are not gonna roll down your eyes. It's impossible for a human being to open up so vulnerable, before Allah, before anyone, and especially Allah, to open up so much, and then not believe, not, not have tears roll down their eyes. Because that's, it's, it's a moment of weakness. To the world, you have to show yourself as strong and confident and you're just fine. Everybody sees you and thinks everything's okay. But the only one who gets to know nothing is okay, there's a lot of problems, is Allah. And you, get, you have to open up to Him completely and then you're going to be in a position to ask for forgiveness. Then you get to beg in sajda. Then it turns into something else. Then it's not just astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. It's a real conversation with Allah. It's a real confession with Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a powerful, powerful thing. Try it for yourself. You have to find alone, time alone to yourself. You have to make sure nobody else is listening. You can't even do it in the middle of the night. You get up from the bed, the wife is still in bed, you sit on the side of the bed, Ya Allah, forgive me, and she's listening. You can't do that. Be in the car by yourself, doesn't matter. Be somewhere alone. This is just your time with Allah. Your alone time with Allah. And verbalize it, hear yourself say it. There's one thing to just whisper it. And if you're just gonna memorize a bunch of du'as in Arabic and you don't even know what they mean and just recite them If you're gonna keep doing that and those du'as are beautiful, they're powerful but if the, your heart isn't speaking them, your tongue is speaking them then you're not seeking istighfar yet May Allah reward you for the dhikr that you're doing for every harf that you're reciting but that's not istighfar Istighfar is something else And when these tears come down when this starts opening up then the sky opens up that's when that opens up. There's a connection between those two things. The last thing I want to share with you, just having hope with Allah. And for some people, it's very hard to accept that Allah will actually listen. They've been going through a problem for a long time, and they start assuming Allah is not listening, Allah doesn't care, 
What's the point of making dua anyway? The first thing is the greatest, the greatest gift you will ever get from Allah. You know what it is? Forgiveness. That's the greatest gift you'll ever get. Whether you realize its price or not. Everything else that Allah says He will give you is an added benefit. Everything else. Now, let me give you an example. I have kids. Let's say one of my kids made me very upset. He did something wrong. I got very angry. You should not have done that. You should not have spoken like that. I can't believe you did that. And I scold him. Now that I scold him, uh, he goes home. He goes back and he's, he was drawing something for me. He was making me a card. A I love you. And here's a house I drew or something. He drew something beautiful for me. And when he drew it for me, who's he supposed to give it to? He's supposed to give it to me. But he crumpled it up and threw it in the garbage. And before he threw it in the garbage, his other brother asked him, Hey, why, why didn't you give it to Abba? Why did you throw it away? Abba's so angry at me, he doesn't care about that. He doesn't, he doesn't really care. He doesn't love me anymore. If I knew that he felt that way, what would I do? Yeah, that's right, you better throw it away. No, I'd be in tears. How did you think I don't love you anymore? Yeah, you messed up. Yeah, you did something bad. But you're my baby. You can mess up a million times, I'll still love you. Even if I'm angry, I still love you. Give me that paper. Why wouldn't I? I'll frame that paper. Forget putting it on the fridge. I'll put it behind the glass. I'll take it out of the garbage. I'll, I'll cherish it forever. Why? Because I love my child despite their mistakes. Even when they make me upset. That's just me and my child. When I'm not talking about me and my child. I'm talking about me and Allah. I mess up with Allah. I make mistakes. Allah doesn't even scold me. He didn't strike lightning, lightning from the sky. He didn't push me into hell. He didn't make my heart stop beating. Every time I lied, I didn't develop an inability to speak. Every time I ate something haram, my hand didn't become paralyzed. It didn't happen. Every time I looked at something haram, I didn't go blind. He still kept giving. He still kept providing. And I started thinking, well, Allah doesn't really love me anymore. We used to be good, but now that I'm bad, the love is gone. So what's even the point of making dua to Allah? Nobody will love you like Allah does. Every ounce of love I have for my child, every ounce of love you have for your child or you have for your parents, that love is only a fraction of something Allah put in you. You're not capable of loving anyone. The love we have is actually revealed from Allah. It's a gift from Allah. And if that's a little fraction of the love between two of Allah's creations, we can't imagine the love Allah has for us. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. The only one who believes Allah hates him, and that's it, their story's over, is shaitan. He believes it. There's no reason for him to ask for forgiveness, because he's, he's a lost cause. He's accepted that about himself. If you accept that about yourself, whose footsteps are you following? Think about that. Allah says about nations that He won't destroy. You know, there are nations that deserve to be destroyed, and Allah wouldn't destroy them. You know why? Because among them, there are people who still seek forgiveness. Just because there are some people who still seek forgiveness. Become people of istighfar. May Allah protect all of us. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.